All right, so today we are going to do a video about propagating cranberry hibiscus from cuttings. And I'm going to show you three different ways to do it. Uh, I've got my cloner over here. This is uh, the most, probably the easiest way to propagate through cuttings in my opinion. Um, not everything likes being in this uh, cloner, but uh, the majority of trees and other more woody stemmed plants uh, really do well in this type of cloner using water um, that gets aerated continuously. Uh, you can see I already have some clones in there, but we're going to start from scratch with these cranberry hibiscus cuttings over here. Um, we're also going to do a batch uh, in soil with a root hormone, and we're going to do a batch in soil without root hormone. I expect pretty good results for all three of these because cranberry hibiscus is pretty dang easy to propagate no matter what. Sometimes I get away with just being able to stick it in the ground. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first things first, I have cut these off mainly because they were blown over in the wind and most of these wouldn't be doing very well even if I had left them around. So that's why I have so many of them. We're not going to need all these to do our little experiment here and to show you guys how easy it is to propagate these. Um, so the first thing we need to do is cut these into sections. I prefer four to six inches. So here I've taken one stem out of the big batch and you can see this was my original cut down here. What you want is a diagonal cut just below a leaf node. Now most plant tissue has the ability to become whatever type of plant tissue it needs to, um, but underneath the leaf node is where you're generally going to have the most success with plant tissue becoming root. So we'll go ahead and cut underneath that leaf node there. All right, so next we're gonna remove, um, actually the next step is we're going to make our next cut that ends this first cutting and should start the next one. So on here, I feel like if I go up to this next one, we're probably gonna be too tall. So I'm gonna go to this one to have a better size. All right. So the last thing we need to do now that we have our cutting is to remove all the leaves except for maybe one or two. You wanna remove them as close to the initial stem as possible. So I'm gonna cut those off there. These next ones are gonna go. And the nice thing about doing this with cranberry hibiscus is everything you cut off can just go in the kitchen or feed it to the chickens, whichever one. So now we have this one last grouping. This long mature leaf here is probably gonna be the first one to go, so I'll cut that one. And now I'm left with all of these. So at this point, I can either trim them all just because cranberry hibiscus is so easy or if I want to leave one leaf, I can just simply cut here and now I have one leaf. And that's just kind of giving this plant the ability to still create some photosynthesis um, and renew some nutrients to this uh, cutting to help kickstart these um, new roots it's going to push out. So since I put that rooting hormone in the water already, I don't need to dip this cutting into the rooting hormone. Now I could if I really wanted to try and improve um, the success rate, but like I said, cranberry hibiscus is so easy that I generally don't have to do it. So these little foam pods are what's going to hold the cutting in place. And I typically try and put the foam pod about up to there, maybe, I don't know, an inch, three quarters of an inch just to ensure that that leaf node is touching water as frequently as possible. So here's what it looks like inside of the foam holder. And I try and face the leaves kind of in more of a vertical line, that way they're not 
uh, touching the other plants that I'll end up putting side by side it. And then uh, the last thing you're going to want to do is put a marker just so that if they were very similar to other plants in here that you would remember which ones are which. And so next we're going to make the cuttings for the batch we're going to do in rooting hormone. And the trimming is essentially the same. Picking out a four to six inch section, making sure you're trimming underneath the leaf node, trimming all the leaves down to one or two, and preferably doing it with clean scissors, um, making sure that the leaves are trimmed down all the way to the stem. All right, so next we're gonna just show how we dip these in the rooting hormone. Nothing fancy. Some people like to pour a little bit out in a cup so they're not introducing plant material into their, uh, especially if it's a big jar, uh, you don't wanna introduce any type of disease or fungus. Um, it's never been an issue for me. I'm not saying that just dipping it in here is right, but it's what I tend to do. So all I do is just dip it down in there and then it comes up and you can see the purple gel showing you that it's on the cutting. You don't have to go super far, you just wanna make sure it's covering that leaf node. And next, all you do is take it and just push it down in your dirt. You don't want the soil super compact. That way the roots have an easy place to grow into. And then we'll do that for the rest of them. As you might be guessing, uh, we're gonna just do the same technique for the cuttings we're going to put directly into soil without any rooting hormone. So four to six inches in length, trimming down all but one or two leaves as close to the stem as possible. And since these ones are going straight into the soil, don't have to do anything else. They've been trimmed down, cut just beneath the leaf node. This little leaf is kind of hanging on, but it's probably not going to matter. And um, just going straight into the soil, just maybe half an inch down. Some people say that when you just push them into the soil like this, that uh, you could reduce the success rate because you're damaging the, the bottom of the stem where you want those so the roots to grow. Uh, I've never really had any issues with that. Uh, maybe on some of the harder to propagate plants, that could be an issue, but Again, these things are so dang easy, it really doesn't matter. So I decided to go ahead and do another eight directly into the soil, just to give another perspective of how easy it is to propagate these. I'm putting them directly into mulch soil that only gets about six hours of sun a day. It's gonna be partially blocked out by some more mature cranberry hibiscus that I have growing in this location. Uh, there's even some that have popped up from seed, which will be another discussion for another time. And I've trimmed them all the same way. In fact, some of these don't even have any leaves on them, just so you guys could see that uh, they should propagate just as easily. So we're just going to take them, find a good spot, move the soil around a little bit, and just stick them in the ground like so. And there's no really method to this madness. Fortunately I have plenty of space here and I can just kind of put them wherever and uh, eventually these are going to turn into mature plants that'll keep feeding me and my family. Uh, spacing kind of just depends on how thick you want them to be. These tend to get tall and leggy so I like to grow them in clusters and that way they get a more bushy appearance.